about the GCLU mobile video data set. And this work is done jointly uh, with my colleague Manjun Chan, uh, a postdoc Mukesh, and a PhD student, uh, Sheshadri Panamaga Venkatagiri. Okay. And uh, that's me. Okay, so what is this? What is this data set about? Well, this data set basically consists of 473 video clips, a total of about 31 hours, which is recorded on 45 different performances. So these are uh, singing, dancing, um, drama, and so on. And these are recorded at five different events. Okay. So how do we record these? These are recorded on mobile devices, unconstrained. So basically, we gave the users the phones, and then we don't give them any specific instructions on how they are going to record this. And uh, this is recorded by multiple attendees at the event. Okay. And by mobile devices, I mean we use mostly Samsung phones and HTC phones. Uh, we have a few flip uh, video recorder and a handheld recorder somewhere in there, but most of the videos are from these phones. And multiple attendees, we have up to 15 users that are recording at the same time. So besides the uh, video, we also recorded the uh, sensor streams uh, from the phones. And by sensors, I mean the compass reading and the accelerometer readings. Okay. Now let me show you a montage of uh, some video clips that uh, we have recorded. Okay. Uh, wait, there's no audio. Uh, maybe I'll just play it from the... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen. No, it's not. It's not working. Yeah. It's okay. I'll, I'll just... Sorry. I'll just play it from the... So those are some of the clips that we recorded. So how did we obtain this data? So basically, we have uh, five simple steps. So first of all, we wrote an app that recorded the census reading on uh, Android phones. And then we looked out for public performance events in Singapore that we can f go and attend freely. We gave our phones with the app to volunteers from the attendees, uh, most of them students. Um, and then, very importantly, we ask them to record the performance as if they are going to share it with their social circles, right? their friends, their families, and so on. And they can do it in any way they like. So there's no other constraints, right? except that they are recording this to share with their friends. Okay? And then, after the event, we collect the videos, and we don't do any post-processing except to transcode everything to MPEG-4. And this is mainly just to standardize the video format in the data set. Right? and no other post-processing time. Okay. So what type of data did we, did we get? Well, uh, we get uh, at least half, slightly more than half of the videos are 1080p, and then the rest are 1280 by 720 and 720 by 480. In terms of clip lengths, uh, you can see that a lot of the videos are very short, less than one minute. Uh, probably because they started recording something and then they say, oh, this is not good, boring, and then they stop recording. And you can see that uh, um, most of the videos are below five minutes because the, all the performance are about that length. Uh, we also have uh, uh, they, they video clips that are more than 10 minutes. Uh, in fact, uh, about 6% are more than 10 minutes. The average length of the video clip is 3 minutes 54 seconds, and the longest one we have is uh, 40 minutes. This is basically recorded by the first author of the paper. Uh, he has really strong arm. He has really strong arm and is doing 
that for 40 minutes is crazy. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So what is important is that uh, we have simultaneous recording of the same event from the audience, and we have up to 15 of them. Uh, this I just want to show you this uh, histogram of the number of videos recorded in a minute of the event, and this is uh, recorded at the University Art Festival. Uh, you can see you know, uh, some of the nicer performances. You have uh, more than you know, 10 uh, uh, users recording at the same time. Okay. We have uh, video clips uh, shot from diverse angles because of this. And let me just show you a uh, snapshot from uh, different users of the same performances. <laughs> right. So you can see uh, from there are some from the left, there are some from, from the right. And you can see some that are recording upside down. And again, we don't do any post-processing. We just leave the video as it is. Okay. Uh, the users may zoom and pan. Uh, and I have a video clip to show you what happened. And uh, later, he's going to zoom in slightly. OK. OK. Uh, well, most of these videos are of amateurish quality. Uh, they are shaky. Uh, some of them are overexposed. This is a short clip showing that. Uh, they are occluded. You can see a finger on the top left, and you can see a finger blocking half of the video frame. Uh, some of the videos are out of focus, and uh, they generally have uh, not so perfect framing, where you know, the, the things that you should focus on is on the side or at the bottom of the video frame. OK, so we basically have uh, collected a bunch of videos that are not of production quality. So what is it good for? Well, we think that this is very useful if you want to work on research to improve mobile video quality. Okay. Now, we also collected the sensors data. So an obvious question to us is, can we use this sensor data to help us, for example, stabilize a video? Right. That's an obvious question. Right. Uh, we also have videos from simultaneous recording, the same thing. So can we use audiovisual data from another video recording the same thing from a different angle to repair? So take this uh, thing, for example. So if you look at the uh, screenshot or, or the snapshot on the top right, uh, it's overexposed. You can't see the, the letters at the back of the shirt. But this one you can see. right? So if, you know, if we want to uh, use that video, use this one, we can actually transfer some information over. So that's uh, one thing that you can do. Of course, it's not easy, but you know, that's what we are here for. You can also do some research on uh, automated video editing. And this is what uh, we have done with this data set. So what we want to do is to compose a better video from this simultaneous video clip. Right? So we need to algorithmically filter out the bad videos. So given all of these videos, right? They are all not good, but some are worse than others. Can we filter them out? Right? As for example, those that is occluded by hand or fingers or shaking you know, uh, uncon uncontrollably. Uh, and then we also need things to evaluate the aesthetic of the video. For example, the framing, uh, whether the video is tilted, and so on. And the other thing that would be nice to do is to able to identify what is interesting inside the video. So take, for example, the, the video shot that I've shown you earlier. The, the host is basically pointing to the back of the stage, and then the camera pan to this you know, uh, girl here that is uh, interacting with the host. Right? So if you want, this is the interesting event. This, the girl here that is interesting in the context of the event. And if you want to compose a video that is representative of what is going on, you want to identify this. Right? So how do we uh, do this automatically? So this is what we think you know, the data set is useful for. Okay. So where can you get it? 
Well, we have a website up uh, with the data set, and it's hosted under the, our project uh, website, Jiku. Now uh, we have an interface for users to, uh, because we have lots of data, you might not want to download everything. So you can, for example, filter by length of the video, uh, by the event, and uh, so on, and resolutions, and so on. Okay, so that's end my presentation, and do you have any questions? So, a great presentation, yes? Can I go in the, oh, yes, okay. <laughs> Good, the first. So, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, were any of these events also uh, captured using, let's say, professional uh, grade uh, broadcast systems to have a sort of uh, base or, or ground truth that you can compare your uh, user generated content to? No, we, no. We Right, so one of the issues is that uh, we, we tried in one event, you say we want to go and set up this, and the uh, organizers are worried about this. You know, if you're recording something with professional great cameras and so on, they are more concerned about what you're going to do with the video than you know, students just take out their handphone and record things at the event. Yeah, so we didn't do that. Yeah. Have you actually annotated any of the videos? No. That's Except the Except the the the, the <laughs> sensor yeah. trims, yeah. There's no. Uh, other that would be so interested about if it's uh, and just a remark: you 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 might speak uh, with Matthias Lux after that because they made a system that they can synchronize. So if if you have music uh, mm -hmm. uh, in these videos, then uh, he he can synchronize them that you that you find right. the same vi uh, the videos mm -hmm. which are uh, timely right. synchronized uh, right. based on only on the audio part. Mm -hmm. We, we did as well a synchronization system, yeah. yeah <laughs> if we are just doing those things. <laughs> yeah, regarding annotation, uh, if you have a need for a tool that you, can, uh, that you want to use to mark any sequences, the, our presentation showed a uh, ready-made ready tool for that. So oh, great. great. We can use Wonderful. it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, any more questions or comments? Okay, thank you so much. Oh, okay.